what we've been able to do is bring all of those different groups, the trade unionists, the environmental protesters, the women who the police had sexual relationships with, police spies had sexual relationships with, which is absolutely outrageous. We have been able to, under the banner of the campaign opposing police surveillance, bring everybody together so that we actually speak with one voice. All this damage and all this harm that has come to light since 2011 um, relates to the activities of only 12 police officers. What we know for a fact is that there was at least 102 undercover police officers at the SES, and we don't know exactly how many were operating in the MPRU, National Public Order Policing Unit. London Greenpeace uh, was spied upon. Uh, we had spies in it from the Special Demonstration Squad, and one of them, Bob Lambert, I knew him very well. He was one of the writers of the What's Wrong With McDonald's leaflets that London Greenpeace produced. Five people got sued for libel, and I was one of those people, and none of us actually wrote the leaflet. But of course, by the time we got the writ, he'd long gone. Lambert had relationships with a number of women who were activists. John Dines, who succeeded Lambert in the group, he had relationships with women as well. They usually used the identities of their children. There are eight of us involved in the particular case that I'm in, who had relationships with five different undercover policemen over a period spanning 25 years. So it's absolutely clear that this is uh, an institutional uh, sexist practice rather than an isolated individual rogue officer. One woman who I represented, uh, who's known as Jackie, um, obviously uh, it was a horrific shock to her to discover that her child, um, uh, now an adult, uh, was conceived by an undercover police officer during his deployment um, and after a three-year relationship with her. I was spied on by Rod Richardson, Lynn Watson and especially Mark Kennedy over a period of ten years, uh, mostly with climate camp. Mark Kennedy was the transport for the first two climate camps, organising flatbed trucks and looting vans and whatever to get all the stuff on site. Mark started seeing his first activist girlfriend within weeks of coming into the movement. There are five women who are bringing court cases because of long-term serious relationships with Mark Kennedy. I could name you another ten that he had less involved things with as well. Going and occupying, squatting the land for the very first climate camp, um, which you know we anticipated the police were really not wanting us to do that, so it was the tightest security of any action I've ever been on. I mean, it was like nobody talked to anybody about this, really, really tight. The organisers were saying, like, you don't mention this to anyone, even if you know they're coming. You know, you only talk to us, we talk to other people. The person that told me that, giving the briefing, was Lynn Watson in her living room in Leeds. And the cover police units were spying on activists in the construction unions, uh, UCAT, uh, Unite, RMT, but also other unions such as the NUT, Unison, and CWU, as a possibility at least. That, uh, some of the blacklisting and other industries will be exposed as well. We've been part of many campaigns and we've initiated many campaigns with black and Asian justice campaigns. Families who've lost their loved ones where police have been negligent in their investigation or where deaths in custody have taken place where police are directly involved in either the murder or the death of someone. We know that a number of families and community groups have been spied on by the police unlawfully. I'm here because of uh, my activism on Broadwater Farm 30 years ago. Mm. Unfortunately, they say that the records don't extend back that length of time. But we knew then that we were being spied on and that they were making attempts to infiltrate us. The case of Winston Silcock, he has been proven to have been fitted up and framed for Blake Lock's murder. So it's incredible. But not only would they fit up someone and frame them for a crime that they didn't commit, they would then go on to spy on their families whilst their families were running campaigns whilst they were imprisoned. Some of those campaigns, they crumbled, and we believe that they crumbled because of the involvement of undercover police officers. Peter Francis spied on the Lawrence family. He also spied on Youth Against Racism in Europe, and he spied on me. We were campaigning against a group of horrible racists um, fascists who had um, a headquarters in South East London. The police, instead of spending their resources in trying to combat racist attacks and racist murders in that part of South East London, were actually spying on a grieving family, spying on the Lawrences and spying on anti-racist activists. It's inexcusable, it was wrong. The thing that the Hillsborough panel said was 
we're not here to, to tell the, the one story, we're here to increase public understanding and that's it, is that we will get more details about more officers, more people are about to find out that their past wasn't real. We want to make sure that the, the inquiry is um, open, transparent and that police officers are brought to account for the abuses they have committed. We want recommendations to make sure this never happens again. What we're campaigning for is the end of political policing in this country. We want to give the police a metaphorical, as we said 30 years ago, a bloody good hiding, so that they will learn and that they will understand that their job is to maintain the law, not to undermine it with these kind of behaviours.